show you how to make homemade flaky buttermilk biscuits that I promise you are flakier than the store-bought kind that you go and buy in the can and they whip up within just 20 minutes and that's including your bake time. I have taught thousands of people how to make homemade flaky biscuits. So if you remember grandma's biscuits being wonderful and flaky and you've tried to make them at home and they haven't turned out the same way, I'm gonna share with you some really simple, easy tips and tricks, but it's probably where you're going wrong so that you can have the exact same fabulous biscuits every single time. So make sure that you hit subscribe so that you don't miss any of our videos and tutorials when they come out every single week. Okay, let's get started with our biscuits. So today's biscuit recipe is very simple. I am sharing it with you from my book, Handmade, The Modern Guide to Made from Scratch Living. My name is Melissa K. Norris, if we haven't officially met. And if you have the book, it's on page 21. But if you don't have the book and you want the recipe, I'm gonna give it to you. So you can just go to melissaknorris.com forward slash biscuit and I will send you the written recipe so that you can just watch and don't have to worry about copying down every single thing as we go through it. First up, our ingredient is going to be flour, of course. So we're gonna measure out our flour. You, This is organic, unbleached, all-purpose flour. You can use fresh whole ground wheat if you want. You can use a combination of bread flour, but all-purpose is going to do the trick and it's something most of us all have in our kitchen. So for this recipe, we're gonna do two cups of flour. If you wanna double it, which I'm gonna tell you right now, you're probably gonna wanna double it because these are some of the best biscuits ever. But you can double it or you can keep it at our two cups. We're gonna level that off. And don't worry if you get a little bit of flour onto the countertop because we're gonna be using the countertop when we get our biscuits patted out later. I almost forgot I was so excited to teach you guys about making biscuits. I need to put my apron on. And the reason I need to put my apron on is because I am a messy cook, but I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. If you're a messy cook, I firmly believe it's a sign you're a great cook. Now that I got a little bit more of my flour out, you can also just go in and do the dip method if you want. But we do wanna make sure that we level that off so that we've got approximately two cups of flour. Okay, now we're gonna mix in the rest of our dry goods. And I don't have them memorized, so let's look at our recipe. Your butter needs to be cold, so you take it out of the fridge right before you go to use it. So this has been in the fridge the whole time. I have tried frozen butter, and I found that I don't actually like the way the frozen butter performs as well in the recipe. I prefer it straight from the fridge. We're gonna be doing a half a cup, so four ounces of butter or eight tablespoons. So this is how I cut mine to incorporate it into the flour. So I go down and cut it in half first. You can use whatever butter you want. I always like to use Kerrygold grass-fed butter. And the only place that I can get mine does not carry it unsalted, it's salted. You can use unsalted butter. Go ahead and use the full half teaspoon of salt if you use unsalted. If you're using salted like I am, then just cut it back a little bit. Okay, now I like to take my flour and kind of put it over and coat the butter a little bit, just so that this doesn't stick quite as much when we go and work it in. But even with coating our butter a little bit with the flour, trust me, you're still gonna have some of it sticking and that's fine. So some people will take two forks and work it in. I really prefer a pastry cutter. So we're just gonna start cutting the fat into our flour. 
So you'll kind of see what I mean as you start to work this in. You're gonna have pieces of butter that stick to your pastry cutter. Don't worry about it, just use a spoon. So as we work the butter into the flour, you're gonna notice that there are some pieces that are small and pea-shaped, and then there's some larger chunks of the fat. And you actually want both, because the bigger pieces, as they melt, are going to help create those pockets that create flaky and light-textured biscuits, which is what we're after. So up next, we're gonna add in our liquids. So I have two teaspoons measured out here of honey. So we're going to add that in. So this next tip, we're using our really cold butter. You do not wanna use room temperature because that butter needs to be cold so that when it hits the oven is when it does its melting. That helps create your flaky layers. The next thing that's very important when you are making buttermilk biscuits is that you use buttermilk and not regular milk. Buttermilk has the acidity in it and that is what helps to create the light and flaky texture that we're after with our biscuits. And it's because of the acid or the acidicness in the buttermilk and the way that it reacts with the gluten strands because with biscuits, unlike bread, we don't wanna overdevelop the gluten and the acidity in the buttermilk actually helps to break down those long strands of gluten so that you get that lighter, flakier texture. Now, if you do not have real homemade cultured buttermilk on hand or even cultured buttermilk from the store, don't worry, I got you covered. About 10 minutes before you wanna make your biscuits, take one cup of milk and add in one tablespoon of either lemon juice or apple cider vinegar and then it will become thick and it will have the acidity in it. Now this next step that we're gonna do when we're actually adding in our buttermilk to our dry ingredients and the honey here is important. Don't add all of the milk in. When you are making biscuit dough, we don't want it too batter-like and you can easily add in more liquid, but it's really hard to take it out. So we're gonna start by adding about three quarters of a cup and reserving a quarter cup of our buttermilk here. And then we're just gonna start to mix this up just until the dough starts to stick together. It won't even feel like it's a fully incorporated dough yet, and that's what we're after at this step. So you're gonna see we still have quite a bit of dry flour in here, and this is just starting to come together, so we've got some clumping. This is at the point where you are going to dump this out onto your lightly floured surface, which is why I said don't you be worrying about it if you get flour on the counter as you're measuring that out. So we're gonna go ahead and dump all of this out. Now, I know with buttermilk biscuits and biscuit dough, same as with pie crust, we don't wanna overwork it because that creates tough dough and that's not what we're after. But don't be afraid, we're gonna use our fingers here and we're gonna get messy. So you're gonna to start to bring this dough together just with your hands. And if it holds together in a solid form, then you don't need to add any more liquid. Now, we've still got a little bit of powderiness down here and it's not fully holding together. So we're gonna put a little bit more of this buttermilk right in here. And then we're gonna incorporate this. So we're gonna bring the powder part and we're gonna bring it up on top and work it together. Now to create our flaky layers, we actually need to create these layers. So as this is now holding together, so you want this to still be a little bit, see it's sticking to my fingers. This is what we want. We don't want it to be really dry. We don't want it to be too wet, but we want it to be slightly tacky. So we are gonna start to pat this out into approximately a half inch rectangle shape, okay? So just lightly pat that out and then you're going to fold it over and this is what is gonna help to create, we're creating flaky layers at this point, okay? So you're folding that over and then you're gonna take it, scoop up any dough that's left here on the bottom and then you're gonna put that right on top and you're gonna pat this out into another rectangle. And if it sticks to your fingers too much, like this is starting to stick to my fingers just a little bit, 
then it's okay to use a little bit extra flour and lightly, and I do mean lightly, flour this just a little bit. So you sprinkle just a little bit of flour on there. And then we're gonna continue to pat that out. And we're gonna fold that back into thirds. Okay, we're gonna do this one more time. So you're gonna pull that up, any dough that's sticking. You can use a dough scraper if you have one, but tell you what, your fingers are some of the best tools that you have when it comes to baking. So we're gonna put just a little light sprinkle down here. And we're gonna do this one last time. So it's a total of three times doing the pat and fold over method for our layers. All right, now we need to get this rolled out and to cut our biscuits. You can use a rolling pin if you want. I'm just gonna use my fingers. And we're gonna get this padded out to about half an inch. If it starts to stick or you feel like the butter is getting too melted by the heat of your fingers, then you can go ahead and use a rolling pin at this point. Now, this is another big step and a place where people will make errors. When you're cutting out your biscuits, you wanna use a metal sharp edge. Do not use an upside down cup that pinches the dough and stops it from rising when it hits the heat of the oven. You wanna use something that's metal and you do not want to be a biscuit twister because when you twist it, you're doing the same thing. You're pinching those sides down and you're inhibiting it from puffing up and getting those nice high flaky layers. So you wanna to come to the edge and you wanna make sure that you use even and just push straight down. No twisting. And then we're gonna lift up. Then you can simply just pop it out like this. And one of my other secrets to fabulous Mile High Biscuits is to use a cast iron skillet. So this has not been greased, it's just really well seasoned, has a little bit of oil in it from the last time I used it. And this is what we're going to bake our biscuits in. Then take your leftover dough and I kind of just smush mine back into a shape rather than rolling it all the way back out again because the more times you roll it, the more you're working it and the more likely that it will start to become tough because you'll get the butter worked too far in there and it won't have the flaky layers. Now you can also see when you're looking at the dough, hopefully the camera's picking it up, but you can actually see almost looks like marbling and you can see the solid chunks of butter and the fat in there, which in this case is butter. You could use lard or even coconut oil. I prefer butter, uh, but you can see that, and you wanna see that in the dough that almost looks like marbling. Those are gonna create nice flaky layers. And then if you've got just a little bit of dough left over here, we're just gonna smush this guy together into our last little biscuit. And he's pretty close, not quite. Obviously there's no cutting there, but it does help to have them all have the same shape so they're uniform. Okay, so we've preheated our oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit and we're gonna pop these in and bake them for 15 to 18 minutes until they are golden on top. So you can see all of the flaky layers. Now this is really hot, so we're gonna let it cool just enough and then we're gonna take these out of the pan. But one of the reasons I love to bake biscuits in cast iron, one, because everything flat out tastes better in cast iron, but two, when you bake it in a circular pan and they're touching one another, it forces them to rise up rather than out so you get even more height on your biscuits. So let me know in the comments below if you love buttermilk biscuits, but you've had a hard time getting them flaky. And I also wanna know what is your favorite thing to have with your buttermilk biscuits? 
because really we all need opportunities to have more biscuits on hand, right? So if you enjoyed this video and want more how-tos on how to make things homemade and from scratch, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and hit that bell so you get notified as soon as our new videos come out every Wednesday. And of course, get this recipe. You can either grab it with your copy of Handmade or you can go to melissaknorris.com forward slash biscuits and I will shoot you that recipe straight via email. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.